All right, so I had this sneaking suspicion when I watched Godzilla Minus One a couple of weeks ago and fell in love with it that when I was finally able to sit back and watch Godzilla and Kong the New Empire, I was probably going to feel a bit underwhelmed. Well, I watched it last night and I'm afraid to say I was right. But I wasn't just underwhelmed. I was downright disappointed. Okay, so Godzilla and Kong is the latest installment in the so-called Monsterverse, which began in 2014 with the Gareth Edwards-directed Godzilla. And that was followed up with Kong Skull Island in 2017. Both of those movies were well-received by critics and audiences alike. And in fact, at least for now, Kong Skull Island is the highest grossing movie in the Monsterverse. Then, one of my favorite horror film directors, Michael Doherty, was tapped to direct Godzilla, King of the Monsters, in 2019, which sadly I didn't care for at all. Then another one of my favorite newer directors, Adam Wingard, was hired to direct the last couple of installments, first in 2021, Godzilla vs. Kong, which was really a bounce-back movie of sorts, and that brings me to the latest installment, Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire, which is a major step backwards. And oh, and by the way, the X in the title is supposedly silent. That's according to the filmmakers, not me. I guess it's supposed to be read Godzilla and Kong. So just like so much about this movie, the X in the title is really nothing more than just window dressing. Godzilla and Kong takes place three years after the last movie. and begins with Kong inhabiting Hollow Earth while Godzilla continues to keep peace between the Titans and humans on the Earth's surface. The two monsters must join forces along with a returning Mothra to battle Scar King, Shima, and their army who are attempting to rise to the Earth's surface and reign over it. Hey Fred, pardon the interruption, but I just wanted to take a sec and invite you to join me on Patreon. Your support will be greatly appreciated, and every dime that I bring in through membership goes directly towards publishing and marketing costs of all of my upcoming books, like Slade, which will be my first novel. And every tier is full of rewards like exclusive access to my entire short story library, exclusive videos, polling privileges, and exclusive first draft reading privileges for all my novels. That means you will be the first to read my books. And even right now, the first draft of the first couple of chapters of Slade are on Patreon, available for my members. And if you join today, all four tiers have a seven-day free trial, so you can check out many of the rewards with zero obligation. I really appreciate your consideration and support. Now, on to the rest of the video. Like I said at the beginning of this review, maybe I would have liked this movie more had I not seen Godzilla Minus One a couple weeks earlier. And yes, I get it. It's a little unfair to judge this movie based on how great I thought Minus One was. But I had a very negative response to Godzilla and Kong, so let's talk about it. First thing I want to discuss are the visual effects. I mean, after all, every great kaiju movie has great visual effects. And in Godzilla and Kong, I thought the visual effects left a lot to be desired. The creatures seemed very cartoonish to me, especially King Kong very animated. But even more than that, Hollow Earth itself appears to be animated as well. It's almost like 80% of this movie was done on a green screen. However, I did love Mothra, who has always been one of my favorites anyways. I just wish she was in the movie more than she is, because she was the one creature they actually did a really good job with. And she's probably the reason the third act is a tad entertaining. What about the performances by the human actors in this movie? Well, there weren't any performances that really stood out in a good or bad sort of way. Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and Kaylee Hoddle all returned for the action, but there is no Alexander Skarsgård or Millie Bobby Brown. I don't think the actors really had much of an effect, though, uh, at least with what I thought about the new Empire. The action scenes were okay, but nothing too memorable and nothing that we haven't seen before. There is a certain element that all the great kaiju flicks have in common, 
and that's a real threat to humanity. In Godzilla and Kong, since most of the final clash happens in Hollow Earth, that threat to humanity is never really felt. This, by the way, is an element that Godzilla Minus One mastered, because the threat to humanity was felt from the opening few minutes of that movie right up until the end. Of newer directors, I do think Adam Wingard is one of the most talented, as he showed us with You're Here, which is one of my favorite home invasion movies. I'd almost say that much like Michael Doherty, maybe Kaiju just isn't his genre, but Godzilla vs. Kong was really good, so maybe in this one it was just a case that something somewhere fell off the tracks. Because Godzilla and Kong, the new empire, has some real problems besides not living up to Godzilla Minus One. But if I were to rewatch a kaiju movie today, it would not be The New Empire, which gets a two-star rating from me. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments.